I'm here in the ice of Iceland all around me to uh, talk to you about information modeling. Let's start with this idea of what a model is. You have a few pictures on your screen here. All three of them are of models. The first one that you see is a human model. The second one that you see is a model airplane. And the third one that you see is an information or a data model. What do all these three things share? What do they all have in common? Well, they're all representations of some idealized situation. In the case of the human model, this is sort of an idealized male. He's the model for the male. Now, you can agree with that model or disagree with it, and actually that's kind of the point, but you can't disagree that he is modeling someone's conception of what it means to be a male. Someone's conception. That's a really interesting point. It's not the conception, it's someone's idea. In a similar way, that model airplane down there is someone's conception of what this particular type of aircraft looks like. Is it the aircraft? No. It's a model of the aircraft. It's a representation of the aircraft. The aircraft is out there in the world, and this model of it is showing someone's idealized view with the details that they want to show and not the details they don't want to show. Finally, the information or data model that you see here, the third picture, is also someone's view, someone's idea of, let's see, what is this? This is sales and stores and times and products. Someone's idea of the sales process. This is their idealized view of the sales process. This is the way they've modeled the sales process. So when we talk about a model, that's exactly the sense in which we mean model. It's our idea, our imperfect idea, of something that's out there in the world. So I'll come back to that again when we look at an actual um, piece of a model. We talked about models in general. Now let's talk about information models. Information models, at least as far as this class are concerned, are pretty simple. We first ask, what types of information do we have? And then within those types, we break the type down into attributes. Each type has a certain set of attributes. And then following on that, each attribute has a certain pattern for the values that that attribute can have. Now that may be a little, bit, um, a little bit hard to understand now, but as we go through it again and again throughout this module, I think it'll start to sink in. In addition to what types of information do we have, we also talk about how are items of each type related to each other. So that's what an information model is. Why would you want to do it? What's the point? Well, first of all, when you model information, it helps you to understand it. If you're Facebook and you have people and you don't have any model of what the people on Facebook are, each of the members of Facebook, it's going to be very hard for you to understand what you have in your system and what the possibilities are. So first and foremost, to understand it. But really, and most importantly, to manage it. To be able to gather the information, to be able to store that information, and then to be able to deliver that information. If you're Facebook, to be able to gather all the information about members, to be able to store that information in some form of a database, Facebook's form of a database, and then finally to be able to deliver that kind of information on the page, and also obviously to third parties who you might uh, share that information with. So you model information to understand it, first of all. You model information really very most importantly to be able to manage it, to collect it, to store it, and to deliver it to the people who need it. And finally, you model information because you really have no choice. If you're someone like Facebook, every person has to be modeled. Every person has to behave according to the same rules. Otherwise, your data will be a mess. Can you imagine a billion different people in Facebook and all of them have different attributes? All of them behave differently? Can't do it. So really, in the end, we model the information because we really have no choice but to model it. Otherwise, our systems would just fall over from the complexity.